Friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at John 10.30, where Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Was Jesus claiming to be God, as many believe and claim? Let's look at the biblical facts. Let's go. Let us now become familiar with the conversation between Jesus and the Jews. We turn to John 10.22. At that time the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. We often find this is the case with the rebellious Jews. They would not believe Jesus or they simply did not understand. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And there's the actual verse that many have become confused by and do not fully understand what Jesus meant. Let us now become familiar with what Trinitarians believe, say and teach. In Gill's exposition of the entire Bible, we read at the end of his conclusion. But that they are one God. As we see, most Trinitarians believe and still believe today that Jesus was claiming in John 10.30 to be one God with his Father. And what did the rebellious Jews believe Jesus meant when he said, I and the Father are one? The answer is in the next coming verse of John 10.33. So let's have a look. John 10, 31, the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? John 10, 33, the Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. As we see, the Jews did not believe Jesus was claiming to be a God, but instead the same God as his Father, by the fact that Jesus had just told them, I and the Father are one. So the Jews reacted by picking up stones again to stone Jesus. So the rebellious Jews believed Jesus meant he was the same God as his Father. And this same belief has continued throughout much of Christianity today. I think we need to examine this closer and when we do we discover some very interesting facts. Jesus 
never said, I and the Father are one God. But instead, I and the Father are one. Jesus did not say, I and the Father are one person or being, as taught by the Oneness Pentecostals. The Trinity Doctrine teaches that there are three persons in the Godhead and that the third person of the Godhead is the Holy Spirit. Yet the so-called third person of the Godhead of the Holy Spirit is not mentioned by Jesus in John 10.30. Why would Jesus leave out and not even mention such an important person of the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit was indeed a separate person and equal with the Father and with the Son? Unfortunately, and sadly, in Simon's opinion, this is what most Christians believe today. As Jesus said, I and the Father are one. The Jews believed that Jesus was teaching that he and the Father are one and the same God, which is not true. And yet even though Jesus did not say, I and the Father are one, God, which again would put an end to this debate, millions today still believe what Jesus did not say, that they are one God. As we will see in the rest of this video, it seems clear that the Jews either misunderstood or didn't believe what Jesus actually taught or meant when he said, I and the Father are one. With the same problem seemingly continuing down the generations. Ending with most Christians today still believing the mistaken phrase. Now, this massive misunderstanding can be seen by what Jesus said in the following verses in John 17:11. And John 17 20, as we will now investigate. Now, the question becomes if Jesus did not mean he and the Father are one God, then what did Jesus mean? What did Jesus mean when he said, I and the Father are one? John 10 30. What did Jesus mean when he said, I and the Father are one? John 10.30 But when we understand the truth, that if God and Jesus are one God, this means that they are not two separate persons, when in fact the Trinity teaches this part correctly, that God the Father, and Jesus the Son, are not the same person, but are both separate and divine. But then the Trinity teaches wrongly, by believing that God and His Son are one in number. Instead of understanding they are one in nature. Millions simply don't understand that if the Trinity is true and correct, and there is one God who they believe is manifested in three separate persons, then their theory utterly contradicts the scriptures which teach that God is one. Because instead the Trinity actually teaches the opposite, that God is not one but is three. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mark 12 29. See now that I myself am he, there is no God besides me. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Now let's get back to John 10 30. I and the Father are one, said Jesus. When Simon was a Trinitarian for about 10 years, 
He was one of those people who misunderstood John 10:30, believing that Jesus meant he and God are one God, but then he changed his mind. He came to understand a simple fact, that this so-called statement contradicts Jesus' own teachings, many, many times throughout the Bible. In fact, Jesus always said, and only ever said, that he is literally the Son of God, and there is only one true God, in John 17, 3. Meaning, who has always existed, who has always been. If we rewind back to John 10, 16, we see how Jesus uses a similar illustration to explain how the true born again believers will also become one. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. And this same theme is consistent with all of Jesus' teachings, as we will go on to examine. Firstly, we know that when a man and a woman come together in marriage, it is said that they become one. However, they are never actually the same person. They are always two completely separate people. Just as we read in Mark 10, 6-9. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They work together as one. Share everything together as one. Sleep together as one. And their children live with their parents as one. Until they leave and marry and also become one. Jesus prayed to his Father God, asking that he and his disciples could become one. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. John 17, 11. Jesus prayed, saying, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. We continue through to John 17, 23. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. As we have seen, here it is clear that Jesus prayed for God and his disciples to all come together in complete agreement and that in harmony they would join together as one family. Just as Jesus has one purpose with his Father, God, to be in complete agreement, harmony and purpose, just as he desires to make all God's children one substance. We have four scriptures 
all confirming being one means to be in complete agreement harmony and purpose proving being one does not mean Jesus or his disciples are one God as we have examined the meaning of being one do we agree that being one does not make us God as Jesus was one with his father God did that make Jesus God no conclusion if Jesus did not mean he and the father are one God then what did he mean in John 10 30 I and the father are one if we go to John 10 38 we discover the answer to what Jesus meant in John 10 30 from the lips of Jesus himself in John 10 38 let's see what Jesus said in John 10 38 but if I do them even though you do not believe me believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father John 10 38 there we have another simple answer to why God and his son are one for God was in his son acting as one as a father and son there again we have another answer to what Jesus was teaching when he said I and my father are one John 10 30 God was in his son Jesus and is one in substance and not in number as they are still two separate persons in the same way God and Jesus are in the born-again believer who are also not one in number as we are still separate persons but who are also one in substance with God and Jesus but please hold on as I am saving the best until last We will now move on to the final biblical fact by turning to John 19.6 where Jesus is about to be crucified. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, crucify him crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to that law he ought to die because he has made himself the son of God. Did you see what I did there? The Jews now want to crucify Jesus because he has made himself the Son of God. By the end, the Jews have suddenly changed their accusation from you being a man, make yourself God. to instead Jesus making himself the son of God. In the end, did the Jews finally understand that Jesus never ever claimed to actually be God? As we have carefully examined, we don't need to be a Bible scholar, teacher, or preacher but just an ordinary person like me off the street to see learn and understand the simple truth of who Jesus claimed to be 
as Jesus never ever claimed to be God, what does this study prove? It proves what Jesus always claimed, that his almighty Father God so loved the world that he literally sent and gave his only begotten Son. When we believe and teach that Jesus is God, when he only ever taught that he was the Son of the one true God, we are no better than the rebellious Jews who accused Jesus for something he never claimed, which they rightly called blasphemy, but wrongly accused him for blasphemy. We are in fact accusing Jesus of slander. Because Jesus never said he was God. But instead only ever said he is the Son of God. John 10 36 Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mark 12, 29 God and his Son are not free, called the Trinity. I am Simon Brown. Thank you for watching this video. May God bless you.